All right, welcome everyone. So this is going to be a demo of the Secure Aid Hub, the Edge AI platform. We are going to look at some of the features which are available uh, on the platform and how one can make use of them. So let's uh, jump right in. I go back to my console and you'll see I'm running the same uh, Secure Aid uh, Edge app, which if you watch the demo on workplace uh, safety solution, you'll recognize. And I'm running it with some uh, configuration. Right, so this, uh, let me just show you the configuration file. So usually you don't have to edit this file, but uh, because as I go through the demo, I'm going to show you various features. So we are going to edit these files, right? Uh, you can actually define the sources of uh, cameras that you have. Uh, we can use any connected uh, camera or a RTSP uh, stream. So if you have a RTSP camera, you'll actually put in the uh, URL of the camera here. And then you'll notice that we have the policy file. So if you have seen the video about the workplace safety solution, you'll remember that we could actually configure a nice policy uh, and then use that to uh, define uh, when we should flag a safety violation. So you need to, uh, for the particular camera source, you can actually tell it which policy file it will use, right? Uh, and then finally, we have something called the duration. So this tells uh, the system that a violation has to be flagged for this many number of seconds before we actually save the image, right? So you can put anything you want here. So right now it says 10. So what it means is that uh, continuously uh, as we go through uh, the detection, because remember it does the inference at real time, right? So every single frame, uh, when there's a violation, you don't want to raise an alarm. So this duration flag actually allows you to control that. So I put it as 10 here, right? And one thing I wanted to show, so the demo I'm going to show is going to be on my Mac, uh, which doesn't have a GPU, so it's going to be all on CPU. Uh, but you can see that we can still support multiple cameras uh, all uh, running simultaneously uh, without any issues, right? So let's just uh, start the demo and see what comes up. All right. So here we go, one, two, three. So this one is actually my iPhone camera. So fail to start. So let me, let me open this again. So here we go again, one, two, and three. So here all the three cameras have started. So let me just, uh, you know, move them around so we can see them more clearly and to give you a sense of what we have, right? So on this side here, you have camera number one, which is my front facing Mac camera. So you can see uh, that it's actually configured for the PPE use case. So you can see it says that no hard hat and no mask, right? So if I go back here, you'll notice that this is the camera one and it has the PPE policy, right? So, so for that, uh, reason you can see that it says no hard hat now if i put the hard hat on it should you know stop marking it as red right so no safety vest no mask but hard hat is on right so this is the ppe one um then i actually have a usb connected camera right here uh, that you can see right it's here it goes right and uh, so this camera is actually set up with the policy of, uh, so this camera number zero here, it's set up with the policy of proximity detection. So I'm marked as green because I'm not near any heavy machinery, right? So that's why it is marked as green. So let me just keep this camera back again. And finally, you'll see that I actually have my iPhone right here and I'm using the continuity camera on the iPhone. And what you will notice is that this camera is configured with a exclusion zone policy. So you see this blue uh, zone here, that is actually the exclusion zone. And if you see someone in the zone, it's gonna mark as, uh, it's gonna mark uh, with red, right? So let me try and see if I can demonstrate that. So here I have, you know, a Lego model right from Legoland. So it says the person, if I bring him into the blue zone, he's marked as 
you can see in red and I'm going to slightly move him away from the zone. And when I leave, you'll see that he's marked in green, right? And if someone else comes in, now we can again see that person inside the blue zone is marked as red and the other person is marked as green, right? So this is an example where we are actually showing that we can apply all uh, three use cases uh, all at once uh, in a you know connected camera. I also have the actual edge device right here, which I'm not using for the demo. So this is a small uh, uh, device from uh, Lenovo. It's the ThinkEdge SE 70. Uh, but uh, so this device actually allows us to do uh, inference in real time with uh, up to four cameras at once, right? So what you'll notice here is that on the left that the frame rate is pretty low, but that's just because I'm using uh, GPU to do it, right? So this is just to show you that you can actually take three cameras, apply it to three different scenes, apply different kinds of policies, and uh, all of them will detect uh, the results, right? So results, by default, it works as a kind of a DVR, a digital video recorder. So every time there is a safety violation, it actually saves an image. So here uh, you can see in the output folder from the based on the camera source and the date, you can see the various images. So if I open this up, so they will notice that it has captured the image, right? Uh, so this is all right now, the ones that we saw, right? And then uh, maybe the other camera, if we open, we can see, so this was the exclusion zone. Uh, let me see when we were pointing to Lego figures. So, so we had kept these figures on, and then you can see that it has captured the it has captured the uh, images uh, when they were in the violation, right? So by default, this is how it works. So you keep it running uh, 24/7, uh, and based on the policy and the duration, it will keep on recording and keep on saving the uh, violation uh, images on your disk. And then you can review them or we use them for uh, reporting, right? So very quickly, let me go back here and show you some of the other capabilities of the platform. So one of the common uh, concerns some people have around this is uh, privacy. So uh, if, uh, because you saw that when we save the images, we uh, for a violation, we actually have the face of the person there. Uh, so we actually support masking of the faces. So let me just put this as true and then quickly show you how that would work. So go back in, run the policy. I may have to adjust the camera, but let me see. Yeah, it is this camera. So let me see if I can do that. So let me just point it here. So you can see that it is uh, detecting my face and it is saying no mask right here, right? But uh, so there's some uh, violation that it is uh, detecting, but when it actually ends up saving the image, if we keep the uh, mask faces flag on, the images that it saves uh, would actually mask the flag. So I'll go here. So this is zero, and you see, and this is the image it's saved, right? And let me just open that here. And you'll see that the face is actually masked. So you do sacrifice a little bit in terms of the processing rate because we have to, you know, uh, mask the face. So we have to detect it and then we have to add a filter to mask it. Uh, but if it, that is something you want to do, uh, you can you can do that, right? So, so you saw we were doing around four to five frames per second, and if I would just go ahead and mark it as false, you'll see that uh, the frame rate is a bit high, right? So we do sacrifice uh, the speed a little bit when we are masking, but if uh, that kind of privacy is important for you, uh, you can always choose to mask the face faces, right? So this is here without the masking and there we are, All right? And now when the violation is uh, detected, okay, this is just my hand was a bit shaky. Let me pick up another image. 
can see the face is not masked again. All right, so I'm going to keep this here. And what I will do is, in order to demonstrate uh, some other capability, I'm going to take use of these Lego figures again. So you can see that sometimes what happens is you have something which is closed, which you can detect. So let me just change the policy here in a bit. So let me use the PPE policy because these Lego figures and I have are not wearing hard hats and I can actually use that. So let me just do this. Oh, let me quickly run it. Right. And uh, just give it a second. Okay, so I can see that, well, it's able to detect uh, the Lego figurine, right? And let me perhaps bring it up a little so that the camera is a little better position. And uh, you can see the Lego figure, right? And if it is a figure which has a hard hat, you can see that it detects hard hat, right? So let me just quickly show you some issues that can come up. So if you have mounted a camera and this guy works well, right? Uh, let me focus. Okay, now if I move this a little bit behind, you'll notice that, uh, let me just move them out of the scene. So you'll notice that it's not able to detect. So if the object goes a little bit behind in the scene, it's not able to detect. Let me try to bring it back up a little bit, just to show you the threshold at which it becomes hard for the system to detect the object. So let me move it back. Right, so, so you can see here, once I place the object somewhere here, it's actually hard for the camera to detect it, right? So, so in this case, what we can do is we actually support uh, on the fry image augmentations. So I'll just mark this parameter as true. And again, you sacrifice a little bit in terms of the inference speed. But what we do is we take every single frame and we augment it uh, into three different images, and then we run a detection directly on all three of them, right? So the idea being that uh, one of the images it would uh, run would be something where the camera actually zooms uh, in a little bit so that it can detect smaller objects. So let me move that just a bit back and then you'll see that um, we are compared to before we are able to detect the uh, object so here you go so you can see that it's able to detect the object much better than earlier right so here you can see that it's actually marking it as right right now if i go back and turn the flag false you'll notice that it doesn't it has trouble in identifying the person uh, object again okay and then now uh, it's again hard for it to um recognize the object okay um so this just is one thing another thing we have is so so far we've just shown uh, the safety use case right uh, but our secure aid hub uh, platform allows you to bring in your own models or actually get any model from the you know the open source community so in fact you directly get access to this roboflow 100 benchmark which is a data set of uh, 100 plus object detection uh, 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 data set and models so here's a full uh, list of the models. You can see the number of images and classes. So you can actually use any of these models 
uh, on the Secure Aid Hub uh, device and expect everything to work uh, as it is. So let me uh, show you a simple example here. So we have uh, our model Zoo, and I'm gonna just pick up some models from there just to show how uh, how it works, right? So uh, let me maybe look at this fall model. So I'm just gonna go do this. Uh, so let's just go here. We have custom policy. I'm gonna use fall. I'm gonna mask the faces. Right. Uh, policy file and uh, camera is one. Okay. So let me run it. So you'll see that uh, from the basic safety uh, use case, the three use cases that we showed in the first uh, in the other video. You can just expand your uh, expand your uh, use cases, right? So, so this is actually fall detection uh, use case. So instead of me actually going in and falling, uh, I will try and use an image to show that uh, uh, this this model can actually uh, detect uh, falls. So let me just do that quickly. All right, so what I'll do is I'll just use my phone to actually show an image of a fall and then see if this works, right? So right here. So you can see that uh, it's able to detect the fall, All right? And the good thing is everything else works as before. So all the features which I showed you still work. So we have the model, it can detect the fall, and then it can flag the violation uh, and it would save the you know the images the same way like it did for the uh, models that we provide right so if you go here uh, this is camera number one 58 so you'll see that it's actually sorry is actually able to detect the fall right and all the basic features that we support uh, for all our models work as it is. So for example, you can again do masking of faces if you want to prevent you know, uh, people from seeing the faces in the fall. So let me quickly show you this. So all the core features of the platform, you know, the alerting, the reporting, the images, they're all uh, they are all available regardless of the model you choose, right? So this is just a model which I have taken from one of the RoboFlow 100, and I just used our you know ability to mask uh, faces. And here you see that uh, on a model you can just combine it with the feature from our platform, and it will mask the face, right? So similarly for you know image augmentation or some of the other. Uh, features we have so like for example you can adjust the duration uh, of the flag right so now let me quickly show you some other uh, models from the ones that we already have so maybe we take a look at uh, smoke which is another safety concern so let's go back to false so i just update the model I'll run it again and then again uh, instead of trying to light a fire here, I'm just going to show you a uh, demonstrate it using an image. So let it load up. And I'm going to just show you the, sorry, here we go, image of the fire. And what I'm going to do is, here's the, sorry, the image of the smoke. So it's going to detect. Uh, smoke right there, right, and now we actually do have a model that can do fire, so which can do both together. So let me just see if we can use that quickly. So that was smoke. Uh, this one is fire. So let me see if I can. Put it up so it can say that yeah able to direct fire and this is actually this model is actually a dual model so it can do fire and smoke so let me just uh, show that again here so you can see it can do smoke 
and fire both, right? Um, now, so by default, we already have uh, at least a set of 20 different models. Uh, just to show you something else, which is this uh, model again from the RoboFlow data set, which is uh, to detect if somebody is drowsy. So this is a model which is trained on images from uh, drivers pointed towards their faces while they're driving, right? So this is to detect if the person is uh, awake or asleep, right? So here we go. And I'm gonna close my eyes and droop a little, see if it works, right? And if I open up and come back in, alert, right? So this is a model. Uh, and if you're, you know, feeling bored, you can also use something like this, which is another model which is actually trained on the game of uh, rock, paper, and scissors. So let me see uh, if this loads up. So just for some fun, we can do scissors, paper, oh, rock, scissor, paper, scissor, rock, right? And all right. So on that note, I think we can end this uh, demo. So, so in this demo, we saw the secure aid uh, hub uh, edge AI platform. Uh, we noticed uh, how it is easy and simple to, you know, bring your own model or take an open source model uh, and then get all the benefits uh, of the platform uh, on that model. So to include things like masking faces, getting augmentation, the ability to define policies, control durations, and, you know, uh, save the violation images and reporting, right? So, so that's, that's it. Thank you. Thank you for watching.